Elden Ring is a modern masterpiece that will no doubt be abused by game journalists looking for the next Breath of the Wild to compare every single other open world game to for the next decade. It really mastered and redefined many open world tropes including <laughs> COLOR! Bet you didn't see that coming after reading the title. Or maybe you did. You know, might as well. But in all seriousness, Elden Ring is a masterclass in subtly using color to immerse the player in their environment. Look at these four generic screenshots! If you've played the game, you can probably tell where these are from with the accuracy of a Disney princess. The thing is, I purposely chose these images so that there's nothing to identify them, no landmarks, no special details, just like the small little things that give the general feeling of the landscape. But the chances are, you saw red, had flashbacks to the crimson rot, that damn mine, and well, you know, demon crows, and thought, that's hell! I mean, Kaled. Kaled. That's just the outside world. Kaled is colored in shades of red, which, fun fact, is often associated with blood, violence, and fire, which fits wonderfully with the apocalyptic disease-ridden battlefield which Kaled is. It's perfect for high-level players who have played way too many Souls games, have Stockholm Syndrome, and now think that poison swamps are the peak of game design. Thank you, Miyazaki! This goes a bit further than just being thematically appropriate. The red colors with all their negative connotations cue in the player that if they're not high enough level, then they're probably not ready for the dangers that they're about to encounter. And this works most of the time until, you know, you're randomly teleported there after, I don't know, opening a chest in the middle of the opening area? Speaking of the opening area, right next to Kaled, you have Limgrave, which is green, scenic, and sort of like the Shire, complete with its own discount hobbits, the Demi-Humans. Just look at how happy they are. Here, the greens fit the idea of growth and new beginnings, and it's a wonderful peaceful, well, mostly peaceful land for new players to poke their heads out of the ground, take a look around before getting brutally beaten back into place by Margit. Don't worry, you'll get them next time, champ. Or not. The color palettes of these two regions are jarringly different even though they are literally next door neighbors. With the sharp greens of Limgrave being the exact opposite of Kaled's reds if you look at it on a color wheel. This sharp difference subtly cues the player that things are changing just a little bit too late for a new player to notice before, well, you know, demon crows. The same approach is used in other areas like Lyurnia. A mysterious swamp straight out of Grimm's fairy tales complete with the horrific monsters starting at just $9.99.99. Here the fog slowly reveals the imposing academy of magic as you wander through it getting lost in the misty blues that cover the swamp. This effect is only heightened by the fact that Glenstone sorceries, also known as, you know, magic, are shown to have brilliant blue lights whenever they are used by you or enemies. The result is that the entire area has this aura of magic around it that slowly overcomes anything that you might find in the entire realm as you explore and now you're getting in by a lobster. Thanks, Miyazaki. Finally, we have the Altus Plateau, bathed under the golden radiance of the Erd Tree. It reflects the holiness of the land and forces the player to notice just how important this area is to the world's lore and story. Coincidentally, this is where the game slaps the player across the face and tells them that they need to get good and fight literal gods to move on, fitting the holy environment, turning the entire landscape into a proving ground for the player to ascend. The best part about all of this is that the colors never really overlap with one another and instead all find their own unique identity. The deep reds of Kaled never really conflict with the subtle blues of Lyurnia, and the emotions they evoke are completely different. These all add a subconscious depth to the game even if you don't think about it while running away from the frogmen. If you want to see just how important these colors are, then look at the map for about 6 seconds and see what regions stand out to you. Did these suspiciously color-coded areas seem important? Well, they should've because the map practically screams that the color themes were intentionally used to segment up the world to see unique areas and themes for the player to experience. Without it, the entire world would feel empty, and the entire feeling of it would be lowered to a level below what they actually managed to achieve. Like I said before, Elden Ring is simply a masterclass in being able to use colors to evoke these sorts of emotions. And, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel welcome to give it a like and possibly even subscribe. You never know what's going to come next. Well, anyways, thank you for watching all the way to the end. I hope that you all have a wonderful day. Goodbye!